everybody, this is Pastor Sean, and I'm the youth pastor here at The Bridge, and I'm excited to share a word with you today. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about crucifixion and sacrifice. And uh, the first question I have for you guys is, have you ever read about sacrifices in the Bible and thought to yourself, man, that stuff is strange. Like, I really just don't get it. Like, I understand giving up something for a good reason, right? Like like giving up sugar to be healthy, or giving up caffeine so I can sleep better at night, or giving up the news so I can have less anxiety, but animal sacrifices? Now, maybe you've flirted with the idea of sacrificing your dog if your dog has woken you up at 3 a.m. every night for the last two weeks, uh, but beyond flirting with the idea, we don't really think about animal sacrifices anymore. Uh, so why are they sacrificing animals? And what does that accomplish exactly? Is it really necessary? And what's with the fixation on blood? I mean, they're sprinkling it in places and on things and even on people. That's disgusting and totally unsanitary. So um, I, I wanna jump into it. In order to understand why they do these things, why they did these things, we really need to understand the culture that this stuff took place in. Now, it's important to remember that the Bible was written in different times and in different places and for different cultures. And to understand what is going on in the Bible and to be able to apply it to our lives today, it's important to understand as much of the original context as possible. So Leviticus 17:11 says, for the life of the body is in the blood. I have given you the blood on the altar to purify you, making you right with the Lord. It is the blood given in exchange for a life that makes purification possible. So in this passage, we learn a couple of things about the context that we're looking for. First is life is in the blood. Second, life and blood was put on the altar to purify them from sin. And third, it made them right with the Lord. That's what this passage shows us. So sacrifices brought two things. It brought atonement and purification. These are big, complicated words, but let's break it down a little bit. Atonement is the absolution of sins. It's the payment, the forgiveness, it's done, it's over, it's gone. Purification is a different element. It's the cleansing of the environment or the atmosphere of the damage that was brought on by sin. Now, sin has a direct and an indirect effect. The direct effect is like if I steal something from someone, like for instance, a coworker's stapler, or the piece of chocolate cake that my wife was saving, or clothes out of my brother's closet, there's going to be a tangible loss. Making sin right in that context means restoring the things that have been lost. The indirect effect of sin is what happens to those environments and atmospheres. My coworker now knows that I may steal his things, so trust is lost. My wife knows that I might put myself first and take the best for myself. So now there's some insecurity introduced into our relationship. My brother knows I may violate his space in the future if he's not watching over it diligently. So uh, he doesn't feel like his things are safe. Atonement takes care of the direct effects of sin. The balance is paid, but purification addresses the indirect effects of sin. It cleanses the environment and the atmosphere so that relationship can be restored. This is why they literally sprinkled blood in the Old Testament uh, all over the place. They're sprinkling it on the altar. They're sprinkling it on people. They're sprinkling it on the walls. Uh, they're literally sprinkling and pouring out blood, not just for the sins to be forgiven, for the actual consequence to be paid for, but so that the environment can be cleansed. They see uh, an actual new life being thrown on the environment. So sacrifices were designed to free us from the effects of sin and release us to be agents of God's love and grace to the rest of the world. So let's talk about the ultimate sacrifice. That's what we're here to talk about today, is Jesus Christ's sacrifice on the cross. In the Bible, there were countless animal sacrifices that were made, but these sacrifices didn't fully free us from the effects of sin 
or fully release us to be God's agents of love and grace to the rest of the world. God knew that we would need something more. So he sent his one and only son, Jesus, to be the ultimate sacrifice for us and to accompany, or to accomplish rather, everything he intended from sacrifices in the beginning. So Jesus' crucifixion, I'm going to be coming from John, the book of John, chapter 19, but it talks about in verses 16 through 36, how Jesus was taken to the top of a hill called Golgotha or Skull Hill and uh, nailed to a cross between two other people. Above him was a sign that read, the King of the Jews. Before he died, he said something key. He said, it is finished. And after he died, they wanted to make sure that he was dead. So a Roman soldier took a spear and pierced Jesus' side, and it says that blood and water flowed. So what exactly happened when Jesus was crucified? And what did his sacrifice mean for us? Well, we're going to open up a couple other passages. Uh, I'm going to start in Romans chapter 8, verse 9, and it says this, but you are not controlled by your sinful nature. You are controlled by the Spirit if you have the Spirit of God living in you. And remember that those who do not have the Spirit of Christ living in them do not belong to him at all. And Christ lives within you. So even though your body will die because of sin, the Spirit gives you life because you have been made right with God. The Spirit of God, who raised Jesus from the dead, lives in you. And just as God raised Christ Jesus from the dead, he will give life to your mortal bodies by this same spirit living within you. This passage shows a couple of things that happened when Jesus sacrificed himself on the cross. First, freedom. We are no longer controlled by our sinful nature because we have the spirit of God living in us. We used to be controlled by our sinful nature. We used to be bound to it and held captive by it. But now we are free to be the men and women of God that he created us to be. Truly free to be loved and to love in return. The second thing is life. The effect of sin in death is death for us. But Christ's sacrifice brings us life beyond the grave. Christ conquered death for us through his death on the cross and his resurrection, which we'll get into later. A right standing with God. We no longer have to wonder where we stand with God or how he feels about us. As Hebrews 4.16 says, so let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There we will receive his mercy and we will find grace to help us when we need it most. I don't know about you guys, but sometimes when I do something that I know isn't right or that I feel like God is gonna be upset with me about, it makes me nervous to uh, pray or to wanna spend time with God or, or to wanna go to church because I'm not sure how God feels about me. But what Jesus did on the cross for us is part of that, it's not just the removal of the sins, but it's the cleansing of the atmosphere so that we don't have to wonder or worry how God feels about us, we're now free to enter into his presence because our relationship with him has been restored. I want to jump to another passage in Isaiah. This is Isaiah uh, chapter 53, verses 4 through 5, and it says this, Yet it was our weaknesses he carried. It was our sorrows that weighed him down. And we thought his troubles were a punishment from God, a punishment for his own sins. But he was pierced for our rebellion, crushed for our sins. He was beaten so we could be whole. He was whipped so we could be healed. Because he carried all our weaknesses and sorrows, he's able to bring us through them into new life. Hebrews 4.15 says, Jesus understood all of our weaknesses because he experienced all of them on the cross. So now he brings healing from our weaknesses and our sorrows. We also get changed hearts through this sacrifice. The prophet Ezekiel prophesied about Christ's sacrifice in chapter 11 of his book, verse 19 and 20, when he said, I will take away their stony, stubborn heart and give them a tender, responsive heart, so they will obey my decrees and regulations. Then they will truly be my people and I will be their God. 
So we receive healing from our rebellious hearts when we're truly free to be God's people and when our hard hearts are replaced with hearts of flesh. This is another thing that was accomplished through Christ's sacrifice on the cross. The last thing is we are made whole. Before Christ was crucified, we were dead in our sin, condemned to be eternally separated from the one we were designed to be in intimate relationship with. His sacrifice allowed our spirits to be born again and allowed us to walk in intimate, personal relationship with the God we were originally intended to be with. So, uh, Jesus' crucifixion, his sacrifice on the cross has made a way for all of our debts to be paid and for the effects of sin in our lives to be restored. Now we get to walk in complete freedom. The animal sacrifices offered before Jesus' crucifixion still left people with hard hearts. They went through the motions, but the motions didn't transform them. Jesus' sacrifice transformed hearts. It gave uh, so much more through his crucifixion. And now, uh, for me, I am compelled to filter my attitudes, my thoughts, my actions through this lens of what Jesus Christ has done for me. That's why his sacrifice was so much more powerful than the animal sacrifices that people were performing before him. It created for me this new rule of life that I, that I allow to govern me. It's love, unity, and grace. Uh, it helps me to be able to walk in true freedom and sprinkle life wherever I go. When I think about what Christ did for me, the amount of love that he showed me, the way that he was willing to fight for unity with me, even though it meant laying down his life, and the amount of grace that he showed me, it helps me be loving toward other people. It helps me fight for unity with people that are difficult. And it, uh, it gives me the motivation and the momentum that I need to show grace to people even when I know they don't deserve it. So Jesus' sacrifice is so much more powerful. And this freedom we've been given through Christ's sacrifice should be a constant reminder for us of God's love for us and it should compel us to be agents of love and grace to the rest of the world. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy the message and I hope it's a blessing for you. Uh, I love you guys and I look forward to seeing you next time.